So welcome back guys. Uh, today we are actually telling you the story of Ask a Pilot and Sprock Bilotten. Actually, I'm not the founder of the Ask a Pilot. I'm ne not either. Neither nope. is Soren, but uh, we still, well, we actually own the company. So we wanted to tell you where everything started with the Ask a Pilot and how we are now on YouTube. Yeah, uh, the story starts about 10 years ago where a pilot called Anders Gronlöde uh, was between pilot jobs and he wanted to stay in touch with aviation and he came up with this idea of generating a website where people could ask questions because his motivation was that that would get me into the books. So mm. he created uh, Sparpiloten, which means ask a pilot in Danish and people started writing him questions and that actually achieved what he wanted because he got into the books and uh, when he approached me it was because he couldn't follow up with all the questions mm. there was just too many questions coming in uh, so i joined about seven years ago helping with the questions and but we quickly found out that it was it was the same kind of questions that came more or less all the time mm. so that's when we started adding content to Sparpiloten. so we would upload previous answers to the uh, the questions we got and we also started getting um, emails about people that wanted to meet with us and maybe have a more like face-to-face -face, uh, coaching about becoming a pilot that was usually the, the the topic people wanted some honest advice about so that required us to actually set up a company because we were starting to charge a little bit for the, that service and since it's just been taking off and there's been lots of exciting different opportunities um, along the way. And you actually bought Sport Piloten. Yes, actually, I, sport, I bought Sport Piloten over a year ago. And actually part of the deal was that I would create an international website, a sister website for Sport Piloten in English. So that's what I have done. So we have askapilot.net now. And it's basically the same format. People can send us questions and we answer them and we upload them on the website. And we also have added a blog. Well, you have also a blog on Sport for Lots of, mm. But we have a blog where we then also write about what we think is interesting and what's happening in the world and what are our thoughts about it, our opinions. So that's what we do on Ask a Pilot. But the most important thing for Sport for Lots of, and Ask a Pilot is actually to provide information about aviation and do it in a non-biased way. In flying schools, we have noticed it even during the corona, the COVID-19, when students are going to the flying schools and asking, is it really a good time to become a pilot? Most of the time, the flying schools are, yes, it's the best time to become a pilot. So when you graduate in two years, you're just going to walk into a job. And it's really sad because the, the truth is no one will know what's going to happen within two years with COVID-19. But the really sick thing is that you wouldn't be walking into a job even before COVID-19 straight after school. So we are just trying to bring more honesty and give honest advice to people who want to become a pilot and who are considering is this lifestyle for me because it's it's a lifestyle and unfortunately not enough people are doing research about what is really to be a pilot and what actually requires from you and from your family as well yeah and i think there's lots of things that pilots experienced pilots have done in their career mistakes that they have mm, made yeah. that that could be good to actually share so other people don't follow the same path and make the same mistakes so that's that has been one of the motivation factors as well that you just you know be open about mistakes that other people have made and and give um, coaching about what could be safe options or what could be realistic options so True. it's not about breaking people's dreams it's no. not like we're scaring people from becoming pilots so I, I would say we're more preparing people for becoming pilots because we we have seen so many times mm -hmm. that uh, people have got their license or the wings as they say mm. and the reality suddenly hits them because what uh, they thought was going to happen after they left the flying school uh, was, was far from reality things what we have done in past you have been part of a tv interview 
uh, about yeah. SAS, when SAS went on strike, uh, about the pilot salaries, we have been part of uh, books, children books and yeah. other books. Yeah, I think uh, th there's been lots of cases where the, the media has contacted yeah. us, but sometimes we get approached by radio stations, TV. Mm -hmm. I, I remember as well being um, given the task of advising the transport minister of Denmark. Yeah. Uh, so I was part of the committee that came with advice to the transport minister. So that was really exciting. Spoke Blotten is also doing work together with the minister of education yeah. in Denmark. And, and it's all about providing honest information about the industry, because as Kuka has said, yeah. it's a bit like going to a flying school. It's a bit like going to an estate agent asking, shall I buy a house? So they, they're very good at telling you all the reasons why you should buy the house. And I'm not saying that they are lying, but they are perhaps presenting the industry from a very positive point of view. And well, there's, there's things you should know before you buy a house. And that's what we try and provide. Well, you need to understand that when a pilot goes to a school, the school is making money out of the pilot. Yeah, that's true. It, that, that's how it works. Yeah. So if someone asks, do you want to get my money? What, what am I going what? to say? <laughs> what they're going to say? Of course, they want the money. Yeah. So they are not going to tell you, no, don't start pilot training. I think what we have found also is that uh, when it comes to picking a flying school, yeah. that could be something that people would like to get some help with. Because, of course, every flying school is the best one and you should start at that flying school and all of that. But actually figuring out which flying school is best for me and trying to see like the bigger picture, uh, that is maybe something we can sometimes help with. Yeah, and also uh, we have been doing pilot interviews, so basically there's a lot of things that you actually don't learn in a flight school. You don't learn about how to make a proper CV, especially for a pilot it's a little bit it's different. Diff a little bit different, yeah. And how to make right applications, really good applications, and basically how to present yourself in the interview and how to actually get through the interview so you can actually nail your answers and get the job. So we have been actually doing quite a lot of that as well yeah, with the pilots and young pilots. And and the latest thing we have started mm. is that we, we have started small network groups for pilots. Mm. So we are just thinking that it might be a little while before you're actually uh, getting your job. Mm. So that's why we have put pilots together who kind of have the same career dreams. Mm. And we try and support them by making monthly meetings and everything to just keep the motivation and feeling that, OK, we are actually not just standing still. And I think that's really important now when there is no jobs around that you stay sharp because suddenly the market opens up again and you want to you want to get it done the first time. You want to nail that job the first time you, you get the opportunity. And that's that's what the networking groups are about. But actually, one of the most important parts of Spock Pilotten and Ask a Pilot is fear of flying. So we have been helping people with fear of flying, uh, not just us. It's also uh, Freddie Kleisner. You mm -hmm. can tell a little bit more about Freddie. Yeah, Freddie is a very experienced gentleman who's been working for more than 30 years with top athletes. And uh, to say it very easy, but and simple. Freddie knows a lot about what goes on in the brain. Um, so he has used that knowledge to help people with fear of flying and actually turning the fear of flying to actually, you know, joy of flying. And the best thing about it is that it's like a training program. So you get yeah. you get taught all the exercises and it's actually something you can do um, in your own time and at, at home. So. It's really a great program that has helped a lot of people. And yesterday, I was actually yeah. helping a lady that's traveling on Friday uh, to uh, Greece. And it, it's really nice to see how people can use Freddie's knowledge to improve their relationship to flying. So it's, it's, it's really nice to work with fear of flying. Then the question, who is Ask a Pilot? At the moment, it's just Sora, me and Freddie. But that's not all of it. We do have a lot of pilots that we do use for advices and counseling. And if we, if there is an area that we don't know, we are happy to direct people to other people, other pilots that know these things way better than we do. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So yeah, you're right. There's a, a huge network we can we can use to answer the questions. Could be it's helicopter related. Could be yeah. F sixteen flying. It could be lots of things. So we have a lot of friends in the industry that yeah. are help, that are helping us out, and uh, we're really grateful that we have such a large network that we can use to answer all your questions. Okay, I think that's it. That's who we are. That's what we do. If you want to contact us, you can ask questions on the website askapilot.net or if you are part of media, media or you want to write a book and you want to check if all the details are correct you can then contact us through an email contact at askapilot.net yeah and that will be until the next time until next time bye, bye.